Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to put on a polyurethane by hand to get a nice mirror finish. So what I'm going to be finishing today is the face of this guitar. It's just raw wood right now. Hasn't been sealed or anything like that. We're just going to do all of that with our polyurethane. And the product that I'm going to be applying is going to be a wipe on polyurethane, which is very similar to a brushing polyurethane. Um, but this wipe on poly is thinner because it's intended to be rubbed on in thinner coats. You can definitely use the brush on stuff. You, uh, you'll follow the same first steps that I'm gonna use because it's kind of a trick that I apply. I think a lot of people probably do it. Uh, and then you follow up by brushing instead of wiping. So it's a pretty simple transition to make if you wanna use that. Uh, but this is the stuff that I'm gonna use for the video. So really the concept is fairly straightforward here. Uh, as with most finishes, we're gonna apply this in several coats. And the trick, so to speak, that I'm gonna be using is the first coat I'm going to apply fairly aggressively with some sandpaper. Now what I've got here is some 1500 grit sandpaper, um, which is pretty fine. You can use something a little less fine, uh, but I'm gonna apply it with the paper so that as I brush it on there and as I wipe it back and forth, I'm creating a bit of sawdust. And the sawdust is going to be basically in the polyurethane and it's gonna help fill in the pores and seal the piece up so that you get a nice, beautiful, smooth finish. Um, so that's how we're gonna kind of avoid any of those dry spots and, and sunk in areas that you generally get when you go ahead and apply polyurethane straight to wood. So we might as well get started so you can see what I'm doing here. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer and uh, you can watch me work. It's important before you move on to this finishing step that you make sure that your wood is sanded nice and smooth. I just did a video recently on uh, wet sanding wood and if you're looking at some options for uh, smoothing out your wood before you start applying your finish, that might be a good place to look. Um, but since that's already done, let's move on to the finishing process. This wood is sanded smooth to about 600 grit right now. So I'm just gonna start by carefully pouring some of this on here and you can use your sandpaper if you need to to kind of control it or you can get it onto the surface a different way. It's kind of up to you. But this wipe on poly is supposed to go on relatively thin so I put a little bit on and then I start using my sandpaper to apply it like I said. And you'll notice it'll be a little harder to notice probably in the camera um, and with such a thin material but you notice that it starts to turn kind of a deeper shade of brown as you sand it. That's your sawdust getting in there. And you don't have to put it on very thick for this first coat. You will make a mess. I've got poly all over the table over here now from me shooting it all over the place with my sandpaper. So you will make a mess doing this. Be prepared for that when you go to apply your finish. But if you want, you can leave a little bit of excess on the surface as it starts to dry because um, it'll just continue to kind of soak in for the first little while. So you can leave it on there and as it starts to dry you'll be able to kind of tell when it's when it gums up a little bit that's when it's time to make sure that you go ahead and take it off of there. So let me do this a little bit more and then I'll kind of show you what I'm what I'm working with here more so in this area obviously where I'm actually applying the finish see normally we assume that sanding is going to produce a relatively dull look but if you look at this now it's already got a fairly substantial sheen building up and that is an extremely light coat that I've applied on there. The reason we're getting that, um, that shine is because it's just so smooth. Now that I've kind of burnished that right into the wood, it's filling in all those little gaps and we're left with, you know, what should eventually be a perfectly smooth finish, which we can then turn into a mirror finish by adding more coats and, uh, and rubbing it out at the end. So the first coat is applied with sandpaper and is kind of crucial to this entire process the way that I do it at least. So I got to make sure that I've got the whole surface done like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. 
but I do need to make sure that I've sanded it all <laughs> adequately. All right, so this has all been sanded now. Uh, it does have a little bit of excess kind of sitting on the surface, but for the most part, it's pretty good. I let the, uh, I'll let the stuff dry for a couple minutes and then I can just go in and just take a rag and buff off the excess. All right, and I only left that for, you know, very, not very long at all, really, a couple minutes. And we've got a nice smooth feel. So I'm gonna do one more coat like that, and then we can move on to wiping on the poly the normal way. You've already seen me do this, I'm gonna do the exact same thing again and we'll come back for the next step. So guys, this has had some time to dry now, probably half hour or so, and it's got just a beautifully smooth finish at this point. Not glossy, because there isn't enough material on there to make it glossy, but nice and smooth. So I can go in and, and just kind of lightly sand this. Um, if you're applying a coat on top with a rag the normal way, uh, the the product recommendation is that you let it sit for three or four hours before you go in and lightly sand it. But because I've kind of sanded those first two coats and rubbed them right into the wood, I'm fairly comfortable with just waiting, you know, 30 to 45 minutes and then moving on. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and apply my next coat. And the way that I'm going to do this is gently with a rag. This is kind of what they expect you to do right off the bat when you're using this stuff. But of course, that's why, uh, that's why the, uh, the sanding is a trick, so to speak. Now the stuff doesn't come out of here very quickly, so you might want to consider pouring some into another container and grabbing it from there to wipe it on. I'm obviously not doing that. I'm just making a bit of a mess of my rag instead. But what I've done with those first couple coats is I've given myself, like I said, a very smooth finish to work with, which is the perfect foundation for applying a nice glossy coat. And once the glossy coat has a chance to dry properly, it'll be nice and smooth and, and ready for, uh, for some polishing if we choose to do that. I don't know why I jumped there. My coffee almost looked like it was gonna fall, which doesn't make any sense. So you can go in and apply a fairly light coat because this is a wipe on poly so all the coats are fairly light um, with your rag and then give that time to dry three or four hours at this point because it's sitting on top and then if you feel the need to do another one you can sand lightly with high grit paper at that point and apply another coat so you can see here this is starting to get kind of a nice nice gloss going not a high gloss at this point but gloss nonetheless and uh, we can turn that into a high gloss by polishing and or by applying another coat and then probably polishing after that. I have made quite a mess because when you apply with sandpaper instead of a light coat with the rag you do end up kind of spraying poly all over the place. All right guys so I waited a couple hours gave that a quick scuff and did one more light coat and you can see now it's got Got a pretty good shine to it. So you could leave it at that. It's pretty straightforward. Doesn't take very long. And uh, obviously it works. But you can also take it to the next level here by taking some steps to polish it. So what I've got for this is a plain rag, some 4-0 steel wool. You can also use high grit sandpaper. High grit sandpaper is probably better, but it is a little tougher to come across, a little more expensive. So in order to kind of keep it cheap and easy for you guys, I'm using the, the steel wool. And I've got some of Bellin's Buffer Polish here. So this is a great product. I've used this before on lacquer, and it works fantastically. So now I'm going to use it on this. I'm going to apply some directly onto my steel wool. Um, you can scuff the surface up to a very high grit and polish using the normal methods. Uh, that would be easier either with this or like I said with the high grit sandpaper or you can apply it right to the steel wool like this for the first portion and use that as a lubricant almost while you use the steel wool to get this surface 
incredibly smooth, all right? You, I mean, you've gone in and you sh your surface should be very smooth from what you did at the beginning there with the sandpaper, oops, with the sandpaper and uh, the poly. But there's a difference between that and the kind of smooth that you want for when you go to polish something, which is what we're getting now. So none of that, none of those imperfections that you get from applying the finish should still be in there when you're done this step. All right, you don't need to sand it too aggressively, uh, maybe a little more aggressively if your finish didn't go on very smooth, but it really doesn't take a whole heck of a lot and that polish is just gonna make it a little bit easier using that in this step to, uh, to go ahead and buff it out after. So right now, after that, I've abraded that back to basically a satin sheen and now I can take it up to a gloss using <laughs> this polish my rag, and a lot of elbow grease. So we'll get started on this. I'm not gonna have you watch me do the whole thing because it is gonna take a while. It always does. Uh, but we'll do a, a kind of a preliminary polish on a little area here. You can see me do that. And then uh, we'll come back when it's done and you can see what it ended up like. I'm a big fan of this uh, this buffers polish by by Bell, and I've used a lot of different polishes. I don't know that I'd that I'd use this for an automotive application, but when it comes to this woodworking style stuff, it seems to work just really well. All right, so after just a few seconds there of that, let's see what we ended up with. If I can get the camera angle properly. Come on. There we go. So yeah, hopefully you can tell as opposed to kind of the satin look that we've got over here. This area is starting to get a pretty nice shine to it. And again, that was only a few seconds. The further you go, the, the longer you work at it with this buffers polish, the better the results you're going to get. So I'm going to keep working away at this. Uh, wish me luck, and we'll be back, well, I guess for you guys, in a matter of mere moments to see what it looked like at the end. Well, that took me a while. Now I know why I use a pneumatic polisher instead of doing stuff by hand. But hopefully some of you guys are in better shape than me. Anyway, it is definitely possible, as you have come to see, hopefully, to get a very nice, glossy, smooth, mirror-like finish just using your hands and some very simple stuff. Don't need to buy any tools really. Um, I applied the poly with a, a piece of sandpaper and a cloth and I applied the polish with a piece of steel wool and a cloth. So it doesn't get much easier than that. You really don't need anything fancy and you can get yourself a beautiful shine. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get to them. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up so it's easier for other people to find. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.